There are three types of people in this world. Peacemakers, they're non-confrontational. Peacekeepers, they're trusting and safe. And peacebreakers, they love to make conflict. Which are you? How is it that the ones who love you the most are also the ones that put labels on you? Last year, I made the decision to tell my family and my friends that I had a different sexual preference than they did, but the response I got wasn't the one I expected. My friends and even my family started treating me different, like I became a different person. I am who I am, and my sexual preference has not changed that. Like, when I came to this program, I was kind of down and out from whatever was going on in my life, and this program, it gives you hope, and it gives you faith in what you can do. And I think showing young people that they ca that it does matter is, you know, it can make a huge change. And I want to do a youth group after this. I want to, you know, bring everyone together. And I want something, I want kids to become activists as well. So, and his program shows you you can do that. And he puts that in you and he gives you faith and he gives you, you know, <laughs> he, and he makes you feel like, you know, you are important and what you have to say is important and, you know, that's why I love this program. It, it makes you sure of yourself, I guess. Have you ever had to find the light in a situation surrounded by darkness? My brother passed away when he was 18 and I would never be the same again. Through his death, I learned a lot about life, which in turn made me a stronger person. My brother always told me to speak my mind honestly and to never take anything for granted. Each day I try to remember that life's about the connections we make with others and the impact we have on the world. Being who we are shouldn't make our friends and families love us any less. We shouldn't have to choose between who we are and what they think is best for us. Love in all shapes has dignity. Let us not build walls between us. Let us not create obstacles that separate us. Only bridges. Bridges that connect us to our own humanity. Never in the world did I think I was going to go to the UN and speak with a group of people that I just met in the beginning of the year and come so close to them. Like, I've become such close friends with half the people in the program, and I still talk to everyone. You know, we see each other in the hallway, say hi, you know. We see each other every single day. And knowing that I can walk in the hallway and just say, hey, you know, I went to the United Nations with that person, and we spoke, and, you know, people cried when we spoke. People were crying in the audience because Angela spoke, because Eric spoke, because because of what we had to say. And never in the world did, I, did we think that we could have such an impact on someone's life. And never did I think I could sit here and talk to you about this, because in the beginning of the year last year, I wouldn't say one word to anyone. I was that girl who sat in the back of the class, who didn't say anything, who was shy. But now, I'm outgoing, you know, talk about anything I want, <laughs> anything I want. You know. Hi, I'm Angela. I'm hard of hearing. People got others by their disability. I met people who didn't understand me. And I met others who think that my disability affects my intelligence. Just because someone is different from you, doesn't mean that they're stupid. I'm Andrew Colombo, and I am a face of peace. When coming into this program, like, I always felt like, yes, you basically know the gist of it, that it's about peace, it's about, you know, helping others, but, like, some people, like some of the teenagers, I know like some, like me, like, like my other friends, we always felt that like, okay, we're teenagers, how much can we be taken serious? But in reality, going to the United Nations or going uh, to speak for that uh, day out against hate or Martin Luther King Day, it shows that even though we're 16, 17, 18 years old, sometimes we're doing more than adults out there. And we have a stronger voice and we're actually more mature than them because if we could see that we're just, we don't judge people by races, like the races or like their preferences or anything. And although like, you know, it's weird because like generations ago, like people were so racist and we've come so far, but it's still sad to know that still people in this generation, our age, still have like, like hate towards people for no, for no reason. And you know, it, people should really learn that it's not what's on the outside, it's what's deep inside. And this program has really changed me. It's my second year of this program. And last year we did a workshop called Faces of Peace. And it's really brought us so much further. And like Miss Anthony always says, you go in that classroom and by the end of the year, you never think that you've done half the things you would have done. And it's really moving and it makes you a better person. <laughs> Hi, my name is Nora Abdel. As a young Muslim girl, parts of my life have been about overcoming obstacles this society seems to face in my way. I'm very comfortable with who, who I am and very proud of being me. With 
Somehow, I get the reason some people aren't comfortable around me. Just recently, I was entering the mall. I was going shopping with my family. As I was entering the mall, a, a lady was leaving, and the lady replied, Oh my God, let's hurry up and leave before we get blown up. I was devastated. It caught me off guard. Was it the hijab that made her say that? Because if it was, I would explain to her that the hijab represents modesty, and I wear it because of my religion, and I believe in peace. I am who I am. I was born Muslim and raised as a Muslim, and no one in this world can change that about me. When is it the right time to speak? When you have to or when you want to, but you think you won't be heard. I am a 16-year-old girl. I was born in Liberia, raised in Ghana. I am the last of 10. I am a Christian. My name is Grace Widisa Ma Johnson, and my struggle is losing the label of the quiet one and finding my voice. Due to this program, I have found my voice. I speak when it matters. I speak for those who don't have a voice. I speak for my friends and my family. I speak for my beliefs. I speak because I am my brother's keeper. Whoa. We're not better than anybody else. You know, we have skills to try to better everybody, but we are just teenagers with a vision who sit together. But what it's like you about the amazing kids comment, like I feel like I sat down September of the beginning of my junior year, just like the average teenager, you know, what could I do? I'm gonna talk, you know, get the easy ninety and woohoo go peace. But it really, but now, but now it really made me feel like confident. Now I feel like I'm like on the step ahead. That I know what to do. I can keep calm, cool, and collective where needed. And like, and now even like, and it shows. Like my teachers ask me when kids get into an argument in class. I've had two teachers last year ask me, "Wait, Eric, you're in that conflict resolution thing. You can talk this out between them." And it makes me feel like it makes me feel important and it makes me feel necessary. And I have that validation and that strength that like that I knew I had but never came out until like I was here and I was like look I'm not okay with how things are and I'm gonna use my voice to make them change. Conformity is something you're born with. Individuality is gained through your experiences. Hi my name is Eric. Words like lonesome, isolation, and struggle describe the everybody problem. Like myself I'm sure everyone has had a time where they felt isolated and alone. Growing up I was the outsider looking in. The kid in the back with his head down I was lonely and scared. I was brought down by the world and kept down by myself, but I was always extending my hand to help others. And one day I decided that no one's voice but my own should be loud when it comes to making my own decisions. To remember, someone's opinion is hollow, but having your own purpose is meaning. You have to see the power to fight the struggle in front of you and be the power to fight the struggle that prevents your light from shining. Come on.